Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. You know, as we look at some of the challenging workloads that uh, data centers are now starting to face and just the changes overall in different architectures, the, the architecture of Flash really becomes a key issue as we start to move into these uh, new realms. Joining me on the light board is Guna Martipuli. He is with uh, Western Digital. Thanks for joining us today, Guna. Thanks, Josh. So, um, so talk to me a little bit. So one of the big things we see, I think, a lot is the discussion around uh, real-time uh, applications and real-time data. Uh, talk about a little bit of how your guys' architecture is uh, handling that kind of a demand. Sure, thank you. So the way we look at um, I.O. primarily is along these three key attributes. So if I take an I.O., there are three significant components to an I.O. The first thing is to protect against failures, so we really have to lock the I.O. somewhere. Next thing is, every I.O. is associated with a lot of metadata operations, though we don't even talk much about them. And the last thing is obviously the persistence. How do we show, store the data for later recovery? Okay. So these three problems get just magnified when you talk in the context of real time. Okay. Right? Because latency becomes a big issue. Sure. So here in our uh, N-series architecture for NVMe, what we really do is we take care of the HA, high availability, okay. more than anything critical. Yes, performance is critical, but HA is mandatory. For yeah, because if you're production. down, your performance doesn't matter. Doesn't right? matter. Yeah. So the way we address that issue is we take a dual socket two-node server. Okay. It's, a, it's our controller head two independent motherboards, two CPUs, a bunch of RAM, mm -hmm. and connected with a mid-plane. In the past, it was all SAS, but now going forward, it's PCIe mid-plane. Okay. Connected to dual port and VME SSDs. Okay. So this way, as you can think about, there is no single point of failures. And obviously, each of the controller uh, units uh, connected to two different adapters connected to a LAN or a SAN based on FC or iSCSI or NFS. And, and this is the architecture, really it's been through the product for, for years, but the big update with the uh, N series would be the PCI. PCIe and yeah, SAS, SAS drives to NVMe SSDs. And I'm assuming over time you've increased the speed of CPUs, added more memory, all that kind exactly, of Exactly, to go to the performance attributes. Okay, great. So one of the first things, you know, that uh, key part of the real-time architecture is uh, there are two different types of I.O. that we need to worry about. How do you talk about write? I.O. Let's talk about address the right I.O. So one of the first things to improve the right I.O. latency is our systems actually come with NVDIMMs. There is an NVDIMM in each of the systems, okay. which we actually use it to lock the I.O. So okay. as the, the I.O. comes from the client application, I.O. goes here, obviously goes to the CPU, go to the NVDIMM, and we commit the I.O. to the NVDIMM first, and only then act the I.O. Okay. So this way, now write latency will be real time, as fast as possible, and NVDIMMs are basically like, you know, memory on the Sure. DIMM so, and then you're acknowledging after you get both uh, copies. Both controller units actually are the Perfect. I.O. This is the okay. fundamental thing. Then now, so write, write is done, so you can say like, you know, write I.O. is done. Perfect. But the key question is, what about the metadata? Right. Especially we all know with any SSD, especially NAND-based SSDs, goes through a lot of garbage collection. Sure. If there is a lot of churn in the data. Right. As we talked about, yes, you know, whether it's a sequential or even a random I.O., metadata churn is the most important part. Sure. And for NAND flash, if there is like a lot of touches to the SSDs, it's going to result in what people typically call as garbage collection. Right. In the technical world, it's also known as GC, or mm. background operations. Right. Which have a consequential impact on the latency. And latency, especially in NVMe, becomes so heightened because the drive itself is so fast, right? Fast, right. Yeah. So now when we think about, oh, how do we improve the read latency? So the first fundamental thing we did was to isolate the metadata from where we access the data. Okay. So we take these drives and have dedicated regions for metadata operations. So we, we, when we take this, uh, a, any particular drive, though I, I, we speak in the context of a single drive, but they're actually a RAID Z2 group. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have a lot of intellectual property in how we use the drives efficiently. Okay. But if you take that like logical thing as a, uh, we actually have a slice, and then 
we use certain portions of the drive for metadata. Okay. So now, when we talk only, when we access the drive for metadata, other portions of the drive is not accessed. Okay. So what is the implication of it? There is churn in the metadata, but data is not relatively stable. Mm -hmm. And then, because of this particular thing, the background operations will actually go down as a direct consequence of it, latency will also go down. Oh, okay, that's really fascinating. I, you know, and I, I see a lot of people don't, not pay t attention to metadata, but it, as you said, it's so much a, a such a huge percentage of the overall I/O operation. Correct. This is how exactly we you know keep a, a tab on the latency. One of the right. things you know, uh, all the data that's logged in the uh, NVDIMS, as for the write, we do a delayed. We serialize all these writes. Okay. And then commit into the the persistent uh, device, the NV here. So this way, when the when we write uh, when we write data to the SSDs, that's written in a large sequential blocks of I/O. Okay, that, then so that makes it easier from a garbage collection. Standpoint. Garbage collection perspective. Yeah, so okay. Everything we do, we isolate the metadata, we serialize I/O access from write operation to the SSDs. Mm -hmm. So write latency comes from NVDIMS. Read latency is because of reduced garbage collection background operations. Okay, awesome. So that's how we deliver the lowest latency possible. In our end series, we actually deliver like you know 250 and 200 microsecond latency. Wow. Okay. Great. So another key thing is the um, uh, multi-threaded nature of applications in the data center. Uh, so talk a little bit about how that this architecture works with that. Sure. If I can use a different color. Okay. Now let's take application view of the use of infrastructure. Okay. So we all know like you know at a very high level there are there are like you know two or three types of applications. Uh, this like random I/O primarily. And then there is sequential I/O, right? Yeah. So when we take about all these things, like you know, from an application perspective, this could be a LUN or a share. Okay. Say one application accessing, and this application could be accessing a LUN or a share. Okay. So as you talked about, you know, as applications are like multi-threaded, not like one thread is accessing, multiple threads are accessing these applications, or these like learner volumes. Mm -hmm. So now what we do in the in the past when these IOs still go through the same process in the context of SaaS, this particular pipe is only one queue. Gotcha. Right? So yeah. now with NVMe, one of the advantages we have is this is actually not one queue anymore. We can actually have like multiple queues. Right. Because one of the big things in NVMe is the increased uh, queue depth, Queue right? depth, the number of queues. Right, yeah. So now, to from a stack perspective, and this is not just one drive. Every drive actually has multiple queues. Right. So now we have like multiple pipes uh, for each drive. And now we can isolate the data. Mm -hmm. Primarily, like, you know, one of the biggest challenges uh, in, the, in the file system design is, oh, can your, like, small I.O. is stuck behind a large I.O.? Right. Mm -hmm. Impacts latency, impacts performance not good for anybody. So now we can actually separate those uh, uh, I.O. flows and actually access the drive separately, leveraging the underlying uh, device characteristics. So so really you're matching the multi-threaded application by essentially via queues being multi-threaded yourself. Multi-threaded, right? because yeah. our systems already support like thousands of LUNs on the front end. Right. So it's already multiplexed on the front end. Right. But in the back end, you know, you, wherever you're traditionally uh, kind of stuck with one queue or 24 drives, now we can actually have hundreds of queues, so you can parallelize multiple uh, I/O workflows uh, in conjunction with the architecture we discussed earlier. Yeah. Not only the latency is actually lower for any particular application at the highest level to different applications with different I/O profiles, all of them can see the benefit. And, and, and was this a specific software change that you guys made to take advantage of PCIe, or is it sort of a natural benefit of PCIe? Yeah, so a good question. So there is a there is a twofold to that. Like one thing is uh, certainly you no, know, uh, it's just dropping in doesn't work. Right. So you got to make you know stack changes to support multiple queues. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things we made. Um, and then this rest of the architecture is actually core to our Intelli Flash uh, product architecture. Gotcha. So and I think that's an important point that we shouldn't gloss over. Is you just can't drop an NVMe drive in and have it get expect performance. Yeah, it would just be really fast, but in a single thread, right? Yes, yeah, exactly. exactly. So there you have it. If you're looking to to uh, take care of real-time data and real-time applications as well as multi-threaded applications. Really important to pay careful attention to the architecture. Make sure it's designed to take full advantage of new technologies like NVMe 
and that it can take full advantage in the, of the Q depths and the things that that technology brings to market. I'm George Crump, lead analyst for Storage Switzerland.